The word sephirot means sphere. So these are spheres of consciousness. There's 10 of them. There's the, the bottom one here is the earth plane. In the middle here we have the sun, which essentially holds the essence of the cube. And at the top here we have Ketha. So Ketha is the 10th sphere, the celestial plane. So this, and in between there's 22 pathways which relate to the 22 tarot cards, the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. And this is a whole universe galactic diagram and people have spent their whole life on it. But what I want to show is that when we view this three dimensionally, we're actually looking at a, an atomic structure of a crystal because the essential nature of the cube, as we saw before, is that it's six-sided. So when we look at a hexagon, we're seeing the diagram of a cube. But this model that I'm showing you here is that it's a double terminated crystal. This is a Vogel crystal, and you can see that what they were portraying was the knowledge of a crystal. The crystal, by definition, that makes it different from a rock, is that a crystal represents pure symmetric order at the atomic level. So these are the codes of creation. You'll see many other versions of this though. There'd be this kind of diagram here where there's the pillars on the left and the right. There's the central Sushumna channel, which is raising the Kundalini to the crown. It's very deep esoteric knowledge. But what I particularly like is that a lot of these magic squares, a lot of these tree of life codes actually relate to all the planetary energy. So we're going to talk about cubic reality because there's things called magic squares and magic cubes. And that would probably be the best way to show you how much knowledge was encoded in ancient times.